you want to expand the air attacks against ISIS in Iraq and then begin them in Syria as well, right? I, the, the objective should not be Iraq or Syria. The objective should be taking out ISIS, preventing them from attacking America. And, and what's been missing so far, we've had an air attack here, we've had a bomber missile there, but, but, but it has been photo op foreign policy. It hasn't been driven by a concrete military objective directly connected to our national security. So we should do what is necessary using overwhelming force to take ISIS out before they secure control and before they use the revenues they're getting control of to project force and to carry out terror here at home. Because one of the problems, if you don't have boots on the ground in Syria, you do have some good intelligence mm -hmm. in Iraq. You, you know more or less where they are. Syria, the U.S. doesn't have that kind of ground intelligence. You, you really need some people there who could coordinate where these bombs will go. Otherwise, a lot of innocent civilians are going to be killed. What we shouldn't be doing it is partnering with those who are enemies of this country. So at times, for example, the administration has suggested we might partner with Iran. Look, ISIS are radical Islamic terrorists who want to kill us. But Khomeini and the mullahs in Iran are also radical Islamic terrorists. The State Department says they don't want to coordinate with Iran. Well, well, well that, that is encouraging today, but it has changed. It, it has changed on almost a daily basis. It, it wasn't too many months ago when the Obama administration was arguing for arming the rebels in Syria who were fighting alongside ISIS. And, and in this instance, the enemy of our enemy is not necessarily our friend. Yeah. Some, of those, some of those free Syrian army guys are fighting along the sides of al-Nusra, another terrorist exactly group, right. but not necessarily ISIS because there's a real problem there. You wrote an, an important column on CNN.com today, uh, and, and uh, let me just read a line from it because it's provocative. As long as our border isn't secure, you write, the government is making it far too easy for terrorists to infiltrate our nation. Here's the question. Is there credible intelligence information that ISIS is trying to infiltrate the United mm -hmm. States through the border with Mexico, shall we say? Uh, look, look, there are reports, and they're unconfirmed right now, of ISIS activity along the southern border. I can't say right now there's credible concrete intelligence. But what's clear is ISIS wants to project terror into the United States. Now, right now, they're consumed with this battle in Iraq. But if they're allowed to consolidate power, they will soon can be expected to want to project terror here. It's one of the reasons this week I introduced legislation in the United States Senate to provide that any American, and there are upwards of 100 Americans fighting alongside ISIS, any American who takes up arms with ISIS would, through doing so, renounce his or her U.S. citizenship. So we don't allow terrorists who are training with ISIS to use a U.S. Would, passport, come back and carry out acts of terror. Would you go here. one step further and authorize uh, the assassination, the targeted killing of those Americans who might be fighting alongside ISIS? Well, it would depend what the intelligence was. If someone is actively taking up arms against the United States, is waging war against the United States, then we unquestionably have the authority to defend ourselves. But what if they're waging war in Iraq and Syria, Americans aligned with ISIS? It, it, it depends on what the facts are. That's a very difficult thing to ask, answer in the abstract without the specific facts of, of what is occurring.